Hello everybody. I trust you're having a great week and I do hope you had a good Sunday. We're excited about this short series we're doing, looking at just the ordinary days of our lives. We know that all of us live day after day and many of our days just seem to be ordinary, run of the mill, same as yesterday, same as tomorrow. We believe that God has got some different experiences that he's looking to outwork through our ordinary days. We look at looking that God has got a different expectation to place in our hearts for our ordinary days. We're going to watch a short clip just from one of Sunday's talks. And I hope that as we look at the talk together and explore some of the deeper meaning in your group, that you'll manage to get some further insight and some further inspiration as to how each of our ordinary days can be transformed into an extraordinary day. All of us go through ordinary days in life, and yet God is looking to take you and I through a journey of what are we seeing in our ordinary days. And so there are four observations that we'll briefly touch on in each one of these in the, the story. Observation number one is that Philip and the disciples, all they could see was problems. All they saw was problems. You see, they said to Jesus, we're too far out. This is too remote an area. This is too late in the day. It's the sun is coming down. This is too late in the day. And actually, we don't have enough resources to meet the needs. All that Philip and his compadres could see was problems. You know, it's seeing the problem in every situation, in every solution. Are you that kind of person for whom the cup is always half empty? Are you that kind of person who always sees a problem, even though there's a solution, it's facing you? Are you the kind of person who always sees the negative in every circumstance of your day? That your ordinary day is an ordinary sad day? Your ordinary day is an ordinary hopeless day? That you get up every morning and, the, and you don't see sun shining through the clouds, you see clouds obscuring the sun? What is it that you see every morning when you get up? Are you one of those people who just sees problems in every situation? That it's the facts that shape your focus every day. It's the logic that you see is the thing that determines what you see. Is it the facts that always you, you're, you're, I guess, limited by? Do you ever see beyond the facts? You see, these guys never were able to see beyond the facts. The fact that it was too late in the day. The fact that it was too far out in an isolated place. The fact that they didn't have enough money. Those were the facts that determined what they saw. But I believe that God is looking to build a, a community of men and women who are not only see things through the eyes of facts, but see life through the eyes of faith. See life through the eyes of what can be done, what God is looking to do, and what God possibly can do in your life and in my life. We serve a God of the impossible. We, so we've sung about Him this morning that victory is in His name. We sang about the fact that he's already he's been resurrected from the grave. There's nothing that can conquer our God. And yet it's from that place that you and I need to see life. It's from the, the, the standpoint that he is risen. It's from the standpoint that he is victorious. It's from the standpoint that he reigns supreme, that our God is over all. And if you've got that mindset in you, if you've got that understanding, if that's the frame of reference through which you look at the world and you look at your ordinary day, then you're able to acknowledge the facts but see beyond the facts. You see, they said it was, it was too late. The timing was wrong. It was not the right time for the solution to come. And in many of our lives, that's the challenge for us. That the, the answer to our problems is just never the right time. I'm not at the right time. It's, I'm either too late and it's passed me by. And for many in the room, it may well be that you're sitting here thinking, well, that's okay, but you don't know what I've done with all the days, ordinary days of my life. You don't know what the, the, the story of the ordinary days of my life, and it's now too late. I've gone beyond the possibility and the opportunity to transform my life. And I would encourage you today that it's never too late. It's never too late. It's until your dying breath that God opens an opportunity for every one of us. There was two thieves crowned, eh, crucified on a cross next to Jesus, one on one side and one on the other. And it was with the dying breath of one of those crucified criminals who said, Jesus, would you remember me when you come into your kingdom today? And Jesus turned and said, today you'll be with me in paradise. There's never a too late moment. And yet so many of us think that there's going to be no solution, but only problems because the timing is wrong. For us, it's about the location. It's the notion that actually 
for anything to happen, we're far too far out. There can never be a miracle in this place. There can never be a miracle in this location. There can never be a miracle in this situation. And I don't know what it is for you. Maybe it's the job that you're in. And because you see the problem rather than the, the, the potential in your job, all you see is that I need to shift jobs because there's going to be no answer in this job. And you spend your life jumping from job to job to job to try to find that answer in the wrong place, thinking that it's in the location. Maybe it's in the relationships that you've got, and you spend your whole life jumping from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship, thinking that you're going to find what you're looking for in the relationship, but you always are saying it's the wrong location. The place is wrong. For others, it's the church, and you jump from church to church to church, trying to find the right answer in the church. But that's not there either. We're going to talk more about that this evening. For some, it's the fact that it's just too much. You know, if you, if you consider the average daily wage in the UK is 112 pounds, 200 days wages would have accounted to 22,400 pounds. And Philip says to Jesus, we don't have 22,400 pounds to to feed all this number of people. We just don't have the resource. We don't have the resource to pay the price. The cost is too much. I've done the sums, Jesus. I've done the logic, and we just don't have what was needed. We just are not going to be able to fulfill that which is required. And maybe again, we're in here today thinking, I don't have the resource to fulfill what the expectation is in an ordinary day. And so we look at the day from a negative perspective. We look at the day from a problem point of view. And many people observe life and observe their ordinary days through the eyesight of problem. But take the next character who emerges. His name is Andrew. He was Peter's brother. And it says of Andrew, he uh, came and he said, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. He was in the same situation. He was in the same circumstances. And yet he saw a different solution. He saw through the eyes of potential. Hallelujah. You and I need to get a hold of Andrew and see our ordinary days through the eyes of the potential that they, can, they carry. Through the eyes of the possibility that could happen in our ordinary days. Through the eyes that God could take your ordinary day and transform it. Even though he was seeing the same, living in the same circumstances, he saw a different outcome. And how many of us in here today are looking at the same situation and thinking, you know what, I could be the bringer of solutions rather than the bringer of problems. In fact, if you don't remember anything today of your time here, apart from a, a fantastic little dedication of little Jonah, if you remember one thing, why don't you be a bringer of solutions rather than a bringer of problems? When you show up at your workplace tomorrow, tomorrow morning, why don't you determine in your heart, I'm going to be a bringer of solutions, not a bringer of problems. In your marriage, why don't you determine, I'm going to be a bringer of solutions and not problems. In your, your relationships, why don't you not be a bringer of solutions, not a bringer of problems. It would transform your world. Just because Andrew had the potential to see that he said, you know what, I'm going to be positive about what I have rather than negative about what I don't have. So many people look at what they don't have and don't appreciate and celebrate what they do have. There was an old hymn that we used to sing when I was a little boy. It went like this. I'm not going to sing it. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. And it will surprise you what he's done. Or something like that. <laughs> you see, Andrew was that kind of guy who was looking at the positive before he acknowledged the negative. He said, here's a boy with. He didn't know what Jesus was going to do, but he presented the potential. That's all that he's looking for you and me to do. Come and see our ordinary days from a place of potential. God, what are you going to do this morning? What are you going to do in me and through me? What are you going to achieve in my world today? As I present to you just the fact that I'm a little boy with very little stuff. But I'm going to come and I'm going to bring it. Andrew saw through the eyes of potential. He didn't deny the facts. He didn't deny that people were hungry. He didn't deny that the day was late. There was over 5,000 people there. The darkness was coming out and they were isolated. But I'm glad that he declared the first half of his statement before the second. You know, he said, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish. Here's the potential. And then he goes on and says, but I have no idea how this is going to fulfill that which is required. Isn't it great that he didn't let negativity be the dominant force in his life? 
That he didn't come and say, I have no idea what we're going to do here, but hey, here's the boy anyway. He said, here's the boy, but I'm not sure what you're going to do. I pray that all of our lives from tomorrow morning, we see our ordinary days through different lenses, through lenses that say there is a potential in every day. You see, faith sees the invisible, it believes the incredible, and it receives the impossible. Andrew clearly had an understanding of who Jesus was, and he put his faith in Jesus. He put his trust in the one that he knew. Back in John chapter 1 and verse 49, when he's talking to his brother Peter, he says, I've seen the Messiah. I've seen the Messiah. No wonder he's the one who sees potential in his ordinary day. Because he's already encountered, he's already seen the Messiah. Today, if you've seen the Messiah, if you've encountered Jesus Christ in your life, then of all people, you should be the one who sees every day full of potential of what God can do. Every day with the expectation of a miracle. Every day with the experience that it could be different for you. But how do we see our world? The way we see our world is often the way we end up being ourselves. Are we men and women who present always as seeing the light, our ordinary days through the lens of problem or through the lens of potential? 